Hey guys, this is Miss Dickerson. So, I was watching this movie about this cat. And I decided there was only one thing that needed to be done. That's a Roomba. It's a kind of vacuum cleaner, and it vacuums up the mess on the floor. But how do you know that it's getting all the dust particulates that are on the floor? Well, thing is, we know Carol could do a better job than that. So I went into Carol, and I decided to build a new application. I'm calling it Roomba Carol, and I made a world with some random beepers scattered around. They're not actually random because I put them there myself. And the world can be any size you want it to be because this is built using a conditional test instead of a loop. If it were built using a loop, I'd have to run it 16 times. The precondition for this application is that Carol is facing east. The post condition will also be that he's facing east. So let's see what happens. Let's run this guy. And what I did was I had him go back to the beginning every time and move up a row and start the whole thing over again so that I could recycle the code. And he's doing pretty well. And there he goes. He's going to do his victory lap. The thing about Carol is he's so triumphant that he just can't stop doing the victory lap. All right, so let's take a look at the code under the hood here. I'll just, oh, what's going on here? I'll just pull Roomba Carol up so we can take a look at him while we're analyzing the code. There's a command here that you guys haven't used much, and it's these double pipes. We went over it in class. What that means is OR. So while facing west, OR facing east. So the thing is, is that, um, let's get all this junk out of here. Right now, he's facing west, but sometimes he has to be facing east, like when he gets to the other side of the, street, of the uh, world. It can't be while facing west and facing east, however, because then both, both of those conditions would have to evaluate true. So while he's facing west or while he's facing east, he's going to search for beepers. So if his front is blocked, meaning he gets across the street and he hits up into the wall, he's going to go back home. That's all there is to it. Don't worry about the do a victory lap yet. That was just a little gratuitous coding I did there. So let's take a look at what Search for Beepers is all about. While front is clear and no beepers present, move. While beepers present, pick beeper. So you have to make sure that these two while statements are inside the Search for Beepers method and inside this particular while statement. There can't be a brace here because that'll end this evaluation and it won't complete this evaluation. So once he gets that first row done, he's going to go back home, which is turn around. While front is clear, move. Move to next row. Now, in this case, you really want to have the brace above the move to next row. Because if you don't, he's going to move to next row every time the front is clear and he completes one move. So he won't move all the way across the row. He'll move, move to next row, move, move to next row. Move to next row is simply a turn right. If front is clear, move, and then a turn right. So the thing you're going to run into sometimes is that he'll get blocked at the very end of these applications. 
Um, and that's just kind of a lot of trial and error. That happened to me while I was building this one. Um, and it had to do with the move to next row procedure. Initially, I just had it set as a turn right move, turn right in the main method. But what was happening, of course, is that for that very last street at the very top, like right up here, you know, if I was to pull him up here. Okay, so I could make him turn right. But then when he went to move, of course, he'd be blocked, and I would have gotten that error code. So, so that's really all there is to it. Um, it took me about, I don't know, an hour to do this. So it takes some time. There's about six or seven different ways you can do it. But let's just run it one more time for fun here. There he goes, Rumba Carol. I think he does a better job than the cat on the Rumba. And he's going to do his victory lap. That's the thing right there, though, you have to watch out for if your Rumba ever decides to start doing a victory lap and you can't figure out how to stop it. So maybe in our next episode, I'll teach you how to stop the victory lap. But for now, this is Miss Dickerson. Thank you.